Age gap relationships are more popular than ever. I'm 73. I'm 38. It's only 35 years, that's nothing. Especially with super rich entrepreneurs. I would like a new boat at some point. Um, yacht, you're supposed to call it yacht. It's like a new yacht at some point. <laughs> Uh, the house is only about 50 rooms, it's quite a small house. In this programme, we meet three millionaire couples who are decades apart. I just think we'd like to grow old gracefully. I think it's a little bit easier for me though, because I've got a young wife. <laughs> 58 is a bit old for me. When I first met Bill, I was actually going through menopause. But age gap millionaires attract criticism. Tart, hashtag sugar daddy. Um, somebody else says gold digger. I think it was a bit weird. I was almost 20, so I was like, wow, he's closer to my age than he is to my mom's age. Sex with an older woman? Hydrate well and bring snacks. <laughs> and we meet the millionaire landowner searching for a younger wife to give him an heir. And then let you push out yeah. like that and then go <laughs> like that, you know. The ideal thing would be to have two sons, uh, two, three would be better, and to get on with it, really. When you're a multi-millionaire, you don't need to worry about rush hour. It beats the traffic. Successful businessman John Radford is flying himself home in his private helicopter, worth over half a million pounds. Oh, Daddy's home, boys. I can hear him! Daddy! 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 There we go. Do you want to fly? Yeah. Go on, jump in. Whatever you do, don't press the ejector button. 53-year-old high-flying insurance tycoon John lives with his 37-year-old wife Carolyn and their three sons in their million-pound mansion. So here we have our entrance hall and my favourite thing is this chandelier, which is a Waterford crystal chandelier. And this is all furniture that we got from um, Harrods, which was imported from Italy. And then we've also got piano. We've actually got two pianos in the house. Um, I did have lessons for many, many years, um, but please don't ask me to play anything today. <laughs> Carolyn met multi-millionaire John when she started working for his insurance company. She was 28 and he was 42. I think he quite fancied me <laughs> at work um, and then it just kind of blossomed from there. Well she was a bright intelligent girl and uh, I was um, flirting with her from the off I think. Eventually I got through and managed to take you out for a, a little bit of a meal didn't I? Yeah. And then we, we didn't look back from there did we really? No. Ten years ago now. John built his multi-million pound empire in 1995 and now has over 2,000 employees. The huge success of John's business has afforded the couple a lavish ten-bedroom house. This is my room. Each of their three young sons has a personalised bedroom. So this is a helicopter-themed bedroom, a few goes. I can't quite think where he gets that from. <laughs> Age gap millionaire couples are not only big in the UK. 57-year-old millionaire Kelly from Canada runs her own consultancy business in Toronto. See, gives me much more credibility. <laughs> Kelly's an extremely successful businesswoman and she's not afraid to splash her cash. I love the convertible. This was actually my birthday present to myself. I've been propositioned on the highway while driving at 100 kilometers an hour driving this car. <laughs> Guys waving to me, trying to catch up with me, go and call me like this, like it's actually quite funny. After her divorce 10 years ago, millionaire Kelly discovered she was attracting men decades younger than her. The last time I was single, online dating wasn't a thing. <laughs> But seven years ago, Kelly met 34-year-old Bill on a cougar dating website. She rolled up wearing 
knee-high leather, high-heeled boots, a mini skirt, a black see-through blouse with like another tank top underneath, and I was like, wow, <laughs> way to blow it. Even with a 22-year age gap, Bill and Kelly's relationship blossomed, and Bill eventually moved into Kelly's million-pound home. I think at the beginning, we both thought it was something that we were just going to have some fun with. Especially when I first met Bill, I was actually going through menopause. So um, we um, get a lot of looks when we go out in public. I was he obviously, looked, he looked very I look very young <laughs> in my late 20s. There was one time, do you remember the one cleaning lady that came in and she thought he was one of my sons? Yes. And she's like, um, can you tell your mom? And he just looked at her and said, okay, I'm the partner here, so what would you like me to tell my wife? And she was so embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> and it was quite funny, actually. Although they don't have children together, Kelly has two sons from a previous marriage. She was concerned about how her sons would react to her relationship with someone closer to their age. They both kind of looked at me confused when I said, I'd like to have Bill move in with us. Are you guys okay with that? And they both kind of looked at me and went, you're asking us? I go, well, this is your home. And they looked at me and said, Mom, if it makes you happy, then we're good with it. Back in the UK, millionaire aristocrat Sir Benjamin Slade wants to find and impress a much younger wife. We're going in the front drive at Maudsell House, my very stately home. The drive is uh, only a quarter of a mile. I'd like to have it over a mile. Some of my friends have four mile long drives and I feel um, quite intimidated. Only 98 acres of a park, um, which I'd really like to be a bit bigger, actually. 73 years young, Sir Benjamin lives a life many can only dream of, but has no one to share it with and no one to leave it to. I've lived on my own here for since 2011. Uh, the house is only about 50 rooms. It's quite a small house compared to some people, but it's all I can cope with. To add to his vast wealth, Sir Benjamin hosts glamorous weddings in parts of his estate. We're in the sort of ballroom, and this is a room that makes the money. We marry them here, we dine, we dine them, and then they dance. In, we're in the king's room. This bed is 400 years old. It's eight and a half feet wide, but it sleeps seven, but we charge seven times as much. It is very successful at procreating. For instance, after the wedding they are successful, the bridegroom will ring the bell like that to show that uh, the wedding has been technically consummated. Of course, if they are inexperienced and get into difficulties or anything like that, and they need a bit of instruction, we have over here things that could help, you know, like uh, the odd handcuff, which can thing, uh, this sort of thing is very exciting, you know. Uh, and then on books on what to do, okay? But the one person the bed hasn't been successful for is Sir Benjamin himself. It's not for lack of trying. He often throws swanky dinner parties in the hope of finding Miss Wright. This lady's my favourite girlfriend, <laughs> and I love her dearly. She's rich, powerful, and, um, <laughs> well, you couldn't get better than that. Sadly, we she are... She turned me down. We, sadly, we are just friends. I, I'm yeah, friends friend zone. Yeah. Which Definitely. is a great place to be. Yeah. Who doesn't like to have good friends? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sir Benjamin is searching for a wife at least 35 years his junior. And it's not just a spouse Sir Benjamin desires. He needs an heir to inherit his estate. I would like to have children. I don't want to work forever. And it'd be nice to pass on the responsibility to some children as soon as possible. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Stick with us for this next live hour while we paint everything both indoors and outdoors. Liverpudlian Craig Phillips has made his millions from his property empire and as the DIY don of many television makeover shows. Take care. Good night. Winning the first Big Brother in 2000 at the age of 29 set Craig on his way to earning big bucks. My life changed overnight. It was never, ever the same again. 
Craig's much younger wife, Laura, was only 15 at the time. I just have to say where I was because it makes him even more horrified. So I was at school <laughs> studying for my GCSEs. 48-year-old Craig and 33-year-old Laura met four years ago in a TV studio. Yeah, we met. Mm. We practically moved straight in together. It did, it did feel <laughs> right, didn't it? That's why, you know, mentioning in the past, I think it was in a week or two, wasn't it? I said, I'm going to marry you. Within three years, Craig had married his much younger wife and they now have a little girl called Nelly. Are you, are you hungry? You hungry? hungry and thirsty, probably. Say, feed me, mummy. The self-made millionaire became a father for the first time at the age of 47. I have had conversations with my pals before, and, you know, they've often said to me in the past, Craig, you can't leave it too long, you know, you can't leave it any later, because then they do the calculations. You know, when your child is a teenager and you're going to be on 60. Laura is 15 years Craig's junior and is not in a rush to extend their family. But Craig is approaching 50 and he would like to have more children sooner rather than later. <laughs> I think it's still quite a raw topic. In his 98-acre estate in Somerset, Sir Benjamin Slade is also thinking about children. No, 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 that's bringing the lunch. Yes. The 73-year-old is on the hunt for a much younger wife who can provide an heir. He currently lives alone in his 50-room mansion with just his staff and his dog, Bolly, for company. Bolly is a very good companion because it's all I've got. Um, it gets extremely lonely here, although we've got about 50 staff between the two houses and some people on the farms and things. The neighbours are about a mile away. I have to find somebody as soon as possible, but they will be vetted by Bolly, because he, if he doesn't approve, then that's it, that's the end of it. Sir Benjamin has been married once, but never had children. With his estates worth millions and now in retirement age, he's desperate for an heir to carry on his rich history. I don't think I'm too old to have children, because I have a nine months supply frozen in a sperm bank, and I can use that, and it's the only bank that didn't go bust in the recession. Everybody these days is on these dating sites, and so I don't know anything about it except that um, I read in the newspapers it's nothing but trouble. Jess, one of Sir Benjamin's staff, is showing her boss how online dating works. So there's the app there. Oh, God, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so then you create a new account. Yeah. You put your date of birth in it. Oh, I don't like doing that, so... Um, I think we've just knocked a few years after 56. So now we've got to take a picture. Hmm, I think do something like this. Why'd you do that? What's that mean? It's just like down with the kids, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, so if you turn your hand round. Okay. What do you think of that one? Mm, good. Okay. Rock and roll. Rock and roll, yeah, him. Hey, I like him, yeah, I suppose you'll have to do. I buy the facelift, I'd be all right, yeah. That's what Photoshop's for. What the hell's a Photoshop? Despite his lack of understanding of modern technology, thanks to Jess, Sir Benjamin now has a Tinder profile. Oh, no, she's dreadful. Oh, no, I don't like that <laughs> one. Oh, blimey. <laughs> well, she looks interesting. Um, she's uh, 58, it's a bit old for me. Yeah, she looks a bit like Khloe Kardashian. I don't watch the Kardashians. I think we'll move on. Can we, um, sort of change the ages to under 40s? I think we can in the settings. Oh, don't like her. Oh, Godfathers. This is, um, not my scene, really. They could be, um, you know, ladies of the night, for all I know. In Nottinghamshire, 53-year-old multi-millionaire insurance magnate John Radford and his 37-year-old wife Carolyn are preparing for a family day out at the football. Excited. Um, I think we've got a good chance. I'm positive myself. John isn't just a supporter of his football club. He's actually the owner. Mansfield Town was in dire straits about to go under 
I had a mad moment. I decided that I'd go and buy it. In eight years, I've invested a lot of money into the football club. It's quite a few millions. I wouldn't like to say, I'd hate to say how much I've put in. But it, it is a passion of ours. As owner of Mansfield Town FC, John made the controversial decision to appoint his then 29-year-old partner, Carolyn, as CEO. I was the youngest chief executive at the time and one of only two other females um, that were doing the role um, in British football. So it was a little bit of a whirlwind going from kind of a normal business to the world of football. When I announced that Karen was going to be the CEO, I didn't give a second thought. For me, it was just a natural progression and, and I didn't have anything to worry about. But not everyone felt the same way as John. I'd often have thousands of people chanting abuse at me at football matches. I didn't realise that the perception of a woman going in would provoke such a reaction. Off the pitch, the online trolls gathered. I've tried to not look at comments on social media, but the problem is you can't help but just click on and see horrible posts. So it's all about you and your tits. You're nowhere close to promotion which is nice. Hopefully you have a really good year this year and the chairman's wife doesn't dress like she's gagging for a baller's truncheon. Um, somebody else says gold digger, tart, hashtag sugar daddy. It's really hard when people presume, oh, she's only with John for his money um, and actually it's, that's not the case at all and we were together when things weren't quite as glorious as they are now. And we work really hard together, um, and I work really hard to contribute to our family and to our businesses. But with an older partner and such limited experience in football, Carolyn feels she has a lot to prove. I try not to get down about it, but it would take a really, really hard person not to let it upset you. In Liverpool, age gap millionaires 48-year-old Craig and 33-year-old Laura are starting a new business venture together. We've developed a small company where we want to empower other people to learn DIY. We've built a studio at the house. Using Craig's experience from hundreds of TV shows, the couple are making online videos as well as holding DIY classes. Those of you who know my background, I work on makeover shows where we have to do it fast and it has to be perfect and a professional finish every time. So I would normally just cut it out perfectly and then pop it on and then put my finishing coat over and dab it all over. But what's it like running a new business when you are an age gap couple? We can't really ever escape work. Yeah. We have to work really hard to, to make the time to separate having a dinner and talking about personal things mm. rather than having that business head on all the time. That honestly is your first attempt. Unlike Craig, Laura doesn't have a background in DIY, but her older and experienced partner has been showing her the ropes. I guess you've just taught me <laughs> a few little extra tips here and there, but he needs to watch himself. She's getting better Mrs. on me. Mrs. DIY is coming. <laughs> yeah, Mrs. DIY is taking over me. <laughs> Good, I can retire then. <laughs> and the busy DIY duo aren't just teaching others. They are currently building their own huge eight-bedroom dream home together. We're probably only halfway through the landscape. We haven't done the front drive because it's massive, isn't it? You need 20 odd cars on there. That's the problem. The house is a little bit too big. There's 200 square meters of decking going around six corners of the house and also 88 meters on a balcony above us there. Good job. It's big, isn't it? Because when he gets on the wrong side of me, I could just parcel him off to the West Wing. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear that, Nelly. You didn't hear that, darling. Like most older women in an age gap relationship, millionaire Kelly is keen to stay in great shape for her younger partner, so regularly attends dance classes. I'm going to my pole fitness studio where I exercise and move to music and have fun in a totally different way.
Kelly has been burlesque dancing not only for the exercise, but also to help her keep up with her much younger partner, Bill. Quite honestly, it was part of getting back to um, in touch with my sensual side, getting back to being that whole, just feeling sexy again. I think when she first told me about it, of course, it was a fantasy in my mind that there's all these women in white t-shirts throwing water at each other playing in the studio, which... Pillow fights, yeah. Pillow fights, yeah. right? That's yeah. where my mind went, obviously. <laughs> um, it's just very empowering. It makes you feel very strong, very sensual. She may be in her late 50s, but that doesn't stop Kelly's desire to feel sexy. I think be, for me, being active has certainly um, helped keep me active in the bedroom as Inflexible. well. Inflexible. Inflexible, OK, that too. Advantages of being with a younger man. Everything works. Everything works, <laughs> and then about every 20 minutes, we're good to go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so have you never seen the meme about having sex with an older woman? Hydrate well and bring snacks. <laughs> In Bristol, 73-year-old millionaire Sir Benjamin has pulled the plug on his attempt to find love online. Instead, he's trying a more traditional route, using the services of a millionaire matchmaker. I, I, I love the company of women. It would be wonderful to have a partner be in love. Uh, it would be nice if she was up the duff. You're not allowed to say that, no. What kind of age range is it that you're looking for? Um, well, I think if I'm going to have children, uh, it's probably, you target around about 35. That's the, I couldn't do anything under 30. I thought what I like to do is I like to take them to they can shop to they drop. I like to give them their credit card and they can do what they want. And I love to take them to exotic meals and exotic places. And I would only and, and I want to shower them in jewellery and all the rest of it. The dog's got to approve as well. You see, he is slightly difficult. What kind of things are you looking for? We've got a requirement list here. It helps if she's Aquarius. I right. fit just like that with Aquariuses. Okay. And Libras are quite good. Absolutely no Scorpios. So um, I didn't like Guardian readers, Scorpios, drug users, alcoholics. Applicants uh, must have a driving license. Must be able to breed two sons, don't mind if she's bred before and is proven. A little private capital and income would be helpful. So obviously let's drop the breeding word. You mustn't use that word. No. I'm going to go back and speak to, we have a large team of uh, matchmakers, and we can see if we can find the uh, lady that you're looking for for you. Good. Will that sound OK? Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Can't wait. Let's get started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Age gap millionaires Caroline and John are in the luxurious resort of Quinta de Lago in Portugal. So this is our home away from home in Portugal, where we try and find some kind of solitude. Like many successful millionaire couples, this jet set pair love to invest in property. Um, through here, pool area. This is the bar area where we can just relax here with nice drink. Three stories, so it's a lot of steps. You know, why not? Okay. Then we come to the top floor here. We have a hot tub, which we haven't used yet. Um, and then we, this is like a chill out area. It has such beautiful views as well over Portugal. And this is our swimming pool. And every swimming pool has got to have a unicorn. Isn't that right? The couple bought the multi-million pound property last year. That was just a practice. The practice. I did it proud. And there's another big purchase on the horizon. The kids are now swimming, so I, think I would fair. like I would like a new boat at some point. Um, yacht. You're supposed to call it yacht. It's like a new yacht at some point. <laughs> They are 1,000 miles away from Mansfield Football Club, but Carolyn's always on the job. So we're here today to meet our new manager, John, um, seeing as though we've just sacked our old manager. 
um, or we, I say, John sacked the manager. It was a decision we made. You left the room and said, do what you want. This is one of the things of working together. Um, sometimes we don't agree on certain things. If you leave the room and say, do what you want. <laughs> I didn't mean do what you want. I was trying to get my point of view across um, in a negative way. Anyway, we've got a new manager. <laughs> and they've flown their new manager to Portugal for a briefing. If we do want promotion, we need goals. And we were missing, we had Tyler and he was on loan. I'd like to move away from loan players if we can. Carolyn's had a lot of criticism since her husband gave her the role of CEO of the football club. She's determined to prove the doubters wrong. I really personally made sure that I work extremely hard and probably work twice as hard than a man would who was doing the same job as me. We're going to need goals and a goal scorer. I'd love to sign everybody, but you've got to make sure that the football club is sustainable. I want to prove that I am capable and qualified to be able to succeed in this industry. The team have a major game on the horizon, and after a run of losses, both Carolyn and Mansfield Town need a win. A bit tighter. Nicely done. Superb. Back in Canada, there's a competitive match going on for closet space. Age gap millionaire Kelly and her much younger partner Bill both have their own competing collections. My babies are kept downstairs locked up as they cost a fair bit amount more than most children do. Here we have the starting of my gun collection. Everything from 22 caliber handguns to 12 gauge shotguns. This is my closet. So this is not a normal number of pairs of shoes. I don't know, roughly, probably about 120 pairs of shoes and boots. This is my hobby slash passion slash problem. <laughs> when money is no object, it's easy to indulge your passions, whether it's shoes or guns. Probably invested all in all just in firearms, probably about $20,000 Canadian. This is actually from 1941. This actually landed on D-Day in Normandy. Three and a half, four thousand dollars. Louboutins, and they're very classic pump, so they'll never go out of style. Came in just over a thousand dollars. Well, the most expensive would be this shotgun right here for trap. This one uh, retails for about five thousand dollars U.S. Uh, heels make me feel very sexy because when you're only five foot three, you need a little bit of help. Whatever the gender, in most age gap millionaire relationships, it's the older partner that has the larger income. When I met Bill, there was no, well, you've got a bigger house than me, or you've got a different career, or you make more money, because he knew he was at a different life stage than I was. So it removed oh, yeah, all of that. She was in business world, and I'm in the, the transportation blue collar world. What's stopping me from getting more guns is, one, I need a bigger safe and a bigger room, which Kelly probably won't let me have um, right now, because there's other priorities. I need a bigger closet because I didn't really think I would end up buying that many more, and I have. And Bill is going to build me a much larger closet so I can keep all my shoes together. Not only has the 34-year-old toy boy lost the battle of the closets, to add insult to injury, he'll be the one building the new walk-in shoe wardrobe. As much as I spend a lot of money on shoes, I spend probably as much money on lingerie as well. Which I'll so... never complain about. <laughs> Bill and Kelly don't have children together, although Kelly has two sons from her first marriage. Yeah, I'm going to university for plate setting. Don't make me stab you, okay? <laughs> Take these and the plates over there and set the table, please. Bill is closer in age to Kelly's sons than he is to Kelly. Well, when they first started seeing each other, I think Bill was 28, and yeah, yeah so true. we were like 18, 19, so we're like, oh. I think it was a bit weird at first just because I mean, he's still in his 20s at that point, and I was almost 20, so I was like, wow, he's closer to my age than he is to my mom's age. When I first met Bill, I mean, I would say that was part of the initial conversations of, you know, what do you think about children? I have two boys, are you okay with that? Do you want children? And Bill was very adamant from the very beginning that he didn't want children. She's happier than I've ever seen her, so I think that's a reflection of what Bill has done and what Bill's brought to this family, so I support it, absolutely. As long as he keeps her happy, then he can stay around. <laughs> Back 
like in the UK, Sir Benjamin's millionaire matchmaker has found him a date. I think I'll have a fizzy water. I should have said Chateau Le Tour, shouldn't I? For the 73-year-old, there's a lot riding on this. Look, it's, it's a complete disaster if I don't have children, but I haven't actually had any children. I would like to have children. I don't want to work forever, and it'd be nice to pass on the responsibility to some other children as soon as possible. Hi. Hi. My name's nice Ben Slade, and yours Hi. is? Ivana. Ivana. Ivana, yes. Ivana. Yes. Now, Ivana, would you like a drink or something? Uh, yes, I'd love a um, glass of rosé. Very good seeing you. Yeah. Yeah. Which star sign are you? Gemini. Oh, Bye. no. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> right. Now, let's get down to business. Okay. What do you do for a profession? So I'm a cognitive behavior therapist specializing in anxiety, depression and stress and I also do life and business coaching. Why are you considering an older man? <laughs> I used to date much younger people and it's just like they don't, they don't want the same things as I do. Like they don't want to settle down. I'm looking for a younger lady because I'm family minded in other words. Lovely. I want to start a family. So what sort of age are you? So I'm 38. I tell everybody I'm 56, but I'm lying. I lie about If women can lie about their age, I can lie about my age. That's true. Nobody believes me, um, but actually, I think I'm 73. So, 73? It's only 35 years, that's nothing. It's nothing. The age gap isn't important to me at all. So, what are you looking for in a partner? Well, obviously, I'm looking for love and companionship and somebody to be with because it's a bit boring in the evenings with just me and the Jack Russell Terrier. The date, I felt, went um, very well. There is a 35 years between us, but it somehow got lost in a conversation. It's just been lovely chatting to him. It literally didn't matter at all. I think we clicked extremely well. And should we be blessed with children, um, I think we could do a good team effort. Well, it was absolutely lovely meeting you. Hopefully see you soon. Definitely. Yeah? What are you doing this weekend? In Liverpool, 48-year-old Craig is hoping a facial will help roll back the years. You're going to make me 25 years younger, is it? <laughs> um, no, 20. 20, 20, OK. Having a much younger wife does have its benefits, but it's also a constant reminder that you are no longer a spring chicken. Craig's going to be knocking on the door of 50. I mean, mortifies me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alan. <laughs> Though some of the noises are a bit scary, you sound like the dentist. It's just nice to be horizontal. And even better, Craig's getting younger. Uh, Aren't you, darling? It's like wines in the clock back, isn't it? <laughs> She's taking me back to the 90s. <laughs> I remember the 1990s. Yeah. Although probably not Junior the way school. that Craig remembers <laughs> yeah. it. Can you recognise me, Laura? I've not had a good study of you yet. I'll keep talking just in case you don't recognise me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. I think it's, it's took ten years off Laura. She looks a little bit closer to my age now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In Canada, Kelly and Bill are determined their millionaire age gap relationship will not succumb to the seven-year itch. Hard to believe it's been almost seven years, my darling. I know. It's like i got to remind myself there's an age gap, right? Yeah. But I guess it doesn't really matter whether it's two years or 22 years. If we're not communicating yeah. and doing what we always do, yeah. it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work. If you don't have chemistry, you don't have chemistry, no matter how old oh. you are, right? Take care of each other and love each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly is passionate, loving, unconditionally. She's five foot three. She's not a tall lady, <laughs> and she'll stand out in the room. Bill takes very good care of me. He's a very wonderful partner. Here's to another 25 years. Minimum. <laughs> In Mansfield, it's match day. 
Daddy, you can tell me which way to go. I can tell you which way to go, but you've never flown a helicopter before. So it might be a bit dangerous. Uh -huh. Hey. Millionaire age gap couple John and Carolyn are running late, so are taking their private helicopter to the game. There's a stadium down there. It's a big game for 37-year-old CEO Carolyn. After a difficult start to the season, she needs a win. I've really had to um, go above and beyond to prove myself um, as a woman working within a male-dominated industry. I want to prove to other people um, that I am capable and qualified to be able to succeed in this industry. It's a really important match day for age gap millionaires John and Carolyn Radford, who have invested millions into their local football club. The manager, John Dempster, will be under a lot of pressure as he's looking for his first home win against bottom of the league, Scunthorpe United. And it's not only the manager under pressure. 37-year-old Carolyn feels she has a lot to prove. I never imagined that I was going to be um, a CEO of a football club. Um, I guess it's been a, a steep learning curve for me. If the team doesn't get the result the club needs, she could get the blame. Mansell come close, but they're unable to put the ball in the net. I think I've really had to develop a thick skin to work within football because of some of the comments that have been made um, towards me. In the past, people have labelled Carolyn a gold digger and called her older husband John her sugar daddy. take the lead and the home crowd are off their feet. It's all worthwhile when you see the reactions of the fans, um, you know, how truly grateful they are and the people in Mansfield are, because I think if you ask any of the fans or um, anybody that I work with, my colleagues, they'll say that I work very hard and do a very good job. And that's the final whistle. Mansfield win their first home game of the season. Carolyn is proving the doubters wrong. She may well be 16 years younger than John. Thank you, everyone! But she's more than a match for her successful millionaire husband. Cheers. 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 Well done. Thank Cheers. You. As the Radfords celebrate their crucial win, 73-year-old Sir Benjamin Slade is also hoping for success, as 38-year-old Ivana has taken up his invitation for a second date at his country estate. Hi. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you again. I've some flowers for oh, you, my dear. So <laughs> Very good seeing you. Good Looking you. absolutely fabulous. So do you. And your hair, it's just you've washed it this morning, you've done it this morning. Well, I straightened it this morning. It's looking very smart. <laughs> this is absolutely it's lovely. It's all fallen down over there. Yeah. I, need, need, I, I need some cash to repair that Oh, bit. right, OK. It's only a million pounds. Before the date can go any further, Sir Benjamin must get approval from his very fussy best friend. Come on, Bully. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bully. Hello, Bully. <laughs> His real name is a Bullisterius, who was All right. early. If he's bad, he's Bully. You know? does, he, does he get bad? Oh, well, he is. No. He's bipolar. One minute he's smiling and then he can turn. He can't help it. All right, OK. Well, they seem to get on well, well together, don't they? Good boy, <laughs> Bolly. Good boy. Thankfully, Bolly likes Ivana, so she can get the full tour of his grand house. This is the Monmouth room, uh -huh. which used to be my old room. Wow. And I used to like it because I could shoot out of each window in a different direction. This is the King's room. Oh, wow. It has magic qualities. Five people who got married had a baby nine months later. Oh, right. Some oh. people want to come back and uh, do okay. it again. Yeah. And if they are successful on a wedding night, then they come across and they ring the bell like this. <laughs> Is it a proper church bell? Like? Yes, yes, yes. Right, so let's say I've been successful. Oh, it's actually quite heavy. Yeah, Paul. It's like going around Buckingham Palace. It really is a beautiful place, inside and out. Um, 
really, really think they preserve the history in here. Talking about history, Sir Benjamin has some of his own to share. This is my favorite Russian girlfriend. Okay. And this is the Spanish girlfriend. And she's part Iraqi, part English, that, mm -hmm. that, that lady there. After showing off his past conquests, Sir Ben is pulling out all the stops. Oh, this looks beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Do you like rosé? Yeah, I love rosé. Good. You? Yeah, it's a good one too. So I didn't know what you like, so we got one of everything. Every fish in the season. <laughs> Our lobster I've never tried. Never? No. Oh, I would like to try, though. Everybody eats lobster. And then you have you have things for cracking the claws. They've got all the machinery. I loved the way Ben treated me. I haven't been treated like this for a very long time. I actually can't remember the last time I was treated like this. Flowers, lovely lunch put out for me. You push out yeah. like that and you go like that, you know. <laughs> she is fascinating to talk to. And I think I, I got on really well with her. Yeah, Ben is um, the oldest that I've ever been on a date with. It was very different in every aspect from, from young guys. Um, but again, there's a lot of good in how different it was. Millionaire age gap couple Craig and Laura are getting ready for a celebrity event in Liverpool. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Craig is the oldest partner Laura has ever had. Before I met Craig, would I have had sort of preconceptions of of age gap relationships? Yeah, I possibly would have done. I mean, I think if we'd have met a lot younger, I think then it would have posed a problem. I wonder if I was always envisioned I'd be with a, a younger woman, but it doesn't feel that. It genuinely and honestly doesn't feel that. I'm 47. I don't feel like I'm 47. Sometimes I feel like I'm 21, which is a problem. When you meet somebody, it either works or it doesn't. And for us, it worked like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at you. You look like a princess. Should we go with running late? Well, you're looking mighty fine. I agree. Thank Let's you very go. much. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> this age gap couple work hard, but also enjoy the high life. Come along. Let's go. With their joint business off to a flying start, Craig is keen to embark on another joint project, their second child. I've always wanted, you know, I've always visualised more children around me. And Laura now agrees. A lot of people ask us about, you know, how would we feel if we waited another few years and, you know, Craig would be, are you going to be 50? We have discussed that and we will have another once we've once we've got Nelly into a better routine. Yeah, another I'd say. one, two or three. But Craig thinks that we're going to have three or four. Why not? We're not. Draw the line. And what about our other millionaire who is desperate for a child? Would you like to see each other again? No, definitely, most definitely. I've got to. I'd like to see Ben again as well. <laughs> it was really, truly um, You could teach me some ballroom dancing, couldn't you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I could. You know, you could even dance here. Look at this place. The ideal thing would be to be married um, uh, in a few years' time, and uh, as quick as possible, really, and have two sons, uh, two, three would be better, and to get on with it, really. So, um, what are you up to this weekend? 